Today I'm going to be sharing some art tips and tricks on how to draw the female body with different body types. Any body type, really. You'll be able to apply some of these tips even to the male body, but in this video we're going to focus on the female. If you're trying to improve your art and trying to learn how to draw different body types, here are a couple things to consider. Let's go with five. An understanding of basic human anatomy, body proportions, being able to add and subtract fat, height, and things of that nature in an appropriate way, to use and study reference to learn that there are different body types out there. Just because somebody has abs that looks a certain way doesn't mean that everybody else's abs looks the same way. Same goes for hips, the butt, breasts, the list goes on. And then from an art standpoint to understand that there are very few wrong answers. Let's go. So let's start with a standard body type that you'd normally see in the how-to books and stuff. I like to start with the head, putting little ovals for the ears, and then we draw the neck. Now, generally the neck kind of goes halfway through the jaw on each side, coming down, pretty skinny. And then you have your hourglass type look. Now we have the hands after a little bump at the top, both falling down, and then a bump to indicate where the forearm begins. The bump, or at least the forearm, usually begins after the top half of the hourglass, and then the fist, at least in my style, always comes below the waist. In the rib cage area, again, you know, there are different body types out there. So you can have some that are a little thinner at the top or even bigger. Or the hourglass, how angular it is or how steep it is. All of that kind of is up to you, your style, and what type of design you're going for. I have a line in the middle just to let me know where the spine is. And that would be a very strong help and guide when drawing the human anatomy. Just general moving forward, as you will see. I'm also putting in the legs. We have a line cutting the whole body in half, just letting us know where that waist is. And then we have a V shape for the crotch area and we're putting in the legs, putting in the muscles, having bumps in the appropriate area. Again, this is part of understanding the human anatomy, at least having a basic understanding of where the muscles go, where the bones are, the joints and all of that. A little tip here is usually if I wanna have the hand doing something, I try to figure out where the fist is gonna be first and then just gauge out where everything else is going to connect. I know where the fist is gonna be and then where the elbow is gonna be, and then I just kind of connect the dots. Good tip for when you're sketching, you don't wanna go in with your finite lines just yet. Just loose, keeping it really easy and smooth and loose, loosen your wrist. We're looking for the correct line, but not taking too long to find it. Knowing fully well that if we make a mistake, especially when it's digital, you can always erase. The eraser is your friend. Putting in the breast, you can have simple guidelines just to let you know where things go. But again, right, people are different. How big you want them to be, it's up to you. But you do want to keep in mind the physics of how they're going to be falling and you know how you want them to be positioned. And generally that changes if the character is wearing clothes because then the clothes can help dictate how they're going to be put together. So here we kind of just have them floating. <laughs> I recommend a female bride proportion video that I've already made on this channel that you guys, you guys can go check out that will kind of help prepare you for this. And one thing to note is, like I said, you need to be able to add and subtract certain things, like fat and height, depending on what kind of character you're going for in appropriate ways. And so we have this standard female body, just standing, hand on hip, and you will see how we will morph that into a completely different body type. Key thing to remember when you're putting the female body together, the most recognizable thing is that hourglass vibe from the rib cage to the hips area and having that make the appropriate bumps. Try to have your lines not be so straight. Give them subtle curves here and there because that's how the body is. It's not straight. You can have it be straight in your sketching phase initially, but eventually you want to make that transition. Pay attention to real life images of the human body and where those bumps and curves happen. Sometimes where the muscles are, right before a joint, the list goes on. How intense the hourglass is, is up to you. Sometimes it's not even that visible, depending on the character you're going for, but it's good to keep in mind. This is just a simple breakdown of where things go, because again, understanding of the human anatomy. If you know where all the joints are, showing here a little circle, where the chest is gonna be, where the hourglass is going to start from, which can also be up to you and your art style and whatever character you're going for. It makes things easier because from here, this mannequin, we can then create anything we want. Lines there for the ribs. But from here, we can create almost any body type we want. 
especially if you're gonna have this height. Now I'll just double it, and I can show you guys what I mean by the add and subtract. So here, you want a character that maybe is a little thicker. You can even reduce some of the jawline to show a little more fat. Again, an understanding of the human body. If you know where all the fat cells are generally, then that's the place you wanna be adding a lot of that fat. You'll see less of that, let's say in the wrist area or in the ankles and things like that, but let's say in the arms, the belly, the side, near the rib cage, the hips, everything's kind of wider, bigger, thicker, and we're just making those adjustments. The boobs get bigger as well. The body overall is a little less defined, no thigh gap. Still wanna keep track of all those curves because it's not just gonna be straight. And as you can see, this is all stemming from that initial body. So we can create any body type you want. Even how the belly button this is gonna look might be different. You start to notice different kinds of lines on the body from this form. And that just comes from trying to achieve a skill, skill of observation. People in real life, maybe even take a life drawing class or just photos, you have the internet. Let's draw a kid. Cause this is where things get a little tricky, right? The hourglass is much less so cause they're a kid. The proportions are also different. I recommend you do a little research and study things on the body proportion when it relates to the human, when, when it relates to an adult versus a kid or a baby, the list goes on. It's different, varying depending on the age range. For an adult, you might see someone where the height of their head is like six to seven and a half times the rest of their body. For a kid, that might reduce to anywhere from five to four to three maybe. Again, keeping in mind that people are different, right? <laughs> you can find an 11 year old who's freaking tall that looks like an adult, sure. But we're kind of keeping it general for now. But that also comes in when I mentioned that there are very few wrong answers. You can take a lot of liberties, especially when it comes to your art style. Here is an example of one of the guys that you can find online. And maybe this could be your North Star when putting human bodies together. So for this kid, Everything's kind of going to be similar, but now the head is going to be bigger with respect to the rest of the body versus an adult. So here I have the head, if the head is one, then maybe from the chest to where the hourglass starts to pop out, maybe that's three quarters of the head, and then the rest of it, maybe that's half. To a degree, you can kind of eyeball it. And then you kind of always want the legs to be longer than the three quarters and a half put together, or longer than two and a half of the head or something like that. Depends on what kind of person you're trying to draw, depends on your style, depends on a host of things. There are lots of examples where a lot of these rules get thrown out the window. With kids, I also tend to make their eyes a little bigger in my style and also pop out their cheeks just a little bit. And then I have the plus guideline to make it a little more obvious where she's facing. Let's have another body type, something even more muscular. Again, with those hips, even when they're muscular, especially if they're shredded, there are a lot of curves, there are a lot of parts where the body is almost like really holding on to the muscles, to the scale, to whatever, to whatever is underneath. So everything is a whole lot more defined when you're shredded. Let's so say I have a character here with maybe a little bit of an hourglass. Here we have that plus line again in the guideline near the chest area, also letting me know where the spine is. I kind of use that to show me where the spine is more so than anything else. See, so having more curved lines to where the muscles are, where the muscles are going to be popping out of, taking some liberties here and there. Those bumps for the cows, bumps for the muscles and the legs are starting to clear things up and make things a little more defined. Make her muscular, show her biceps, triceps. You don't necessarily need to know what all these body parts and muscles are titled, but from practice, repetition, and looking at reference and studying them, you're just going to know what to draw at the right time. Having some circles, letting me know where her breasts are gonna pop out of, I don't want anything too big. And you can see that that breast line is gonna to connect to the arm in a certain way. So you gotta keep track of that. Again, it'll be different if she was wearing something where it will kind of be pressed and pushed together and stuff like that. But if it's not, you're gonna to have to figure that out. And again, there isn't one way of drawing it. Trust me, I've seen a lot. Putting in the abs, the obliques, maybe even some veins, she's jacked. The hourglass is visible here, but we could have even done something where, you know, it was less so, and it would still fly. Let's have a skinnier character, taller, almost model-esque, in that typical model pose, making sure that 
one hip is really swinging to one end and having her look down on us a little bit. So you can see with the plus guideline on her face that lets us know that she's facing up a little bit but gonna be looking down on us and hence why the ears on our side are lower. And so I have a video on drawing the face from below which would kind of come in handy as well. Let's give her heels, add some more details, some cheekbones. Let's have another teen. See, it's easier here. So once I know what the height of the character is, I can kind of gauge how big I want the head to be with respect to the rest of the body, knowing those basic foundations, knowing reference from seeing people in real life, and just kind of going with the flow until it works. I have another thick character, but maybe with the CC this time, if you know what I mean. And the same rules apply. It's kind of like adding and subtracting on that foundation of the human body that we already know how to draw. But here, we're kind of just making things a little more intense. The hips more intense, the hourglass more intense, the breasts more intense. If you can nail the pose and the gesture, that can also sell a certain feeling, which might be appropriate. Got to keep track of where all those bumps and curve lines are going to be. But in this sketch phase, I'm not too worried about that. I just want to get the basic understanding of what I'm trying to do, and then I go from there. Because once you have that basic foundation of what you're trying to draw, then adding the details becomes so much easier. You can turn the character to whatever you want to turn them to. Similar rules apply when drawing the characters from behind. I still usually start from the head and then draw the neck and the ear, depending on where they're facing, uh, depending on their hairstyle as well. Sometimes you get to see it, sometimes you don't draw a nice bum but then the line underneath the bum kind of also changes depending on how they're standing if you notice the leg with all of the weight the one closest to the hand on the hip has a line underneath the bum going from left to right but a little upwards now sometimes that wouldn't matter if it's like a really big bum and then the line would just probably act normally or just have a upside down rainbow curve no matter what again we're still using the line at the back for the spine to help dictate where the character is facing. It helps it more visible for us, the viewer, to see all that, as well as know where the line for the bum is going to begin. Little subtle ovals for the back of the leg, for the calves, and then once you have that, you can also help dictate where all the other lines go and how the leg continues downward. Same rules apply here. If you do it over and over, you don't need to morph the character from one body type to the other. You can just kind of go straight to the body type you're already used to drawing. I also like this weird circle at the back of the leg because that's usually a constant. And then the feet can kind of do whatever it wants from there as we will see once I start adding in more, more details. How you start, it's up to you. You can start with the head, you can start with the chest area, you can start with that line of action, letting you know where the spine is and what's going on. Depending on what a character is facing, you want to keep track of some foreshortening or just overlap where you can draw these parts separately. Here I wanted to do something a little more dramatic, almost like she's a singer in an opera, have a little more fun with this one. Her head is kind of tilted in a similar way, so the ears are also down again. Both underlines for the bum are kind of doing the same thing because there's kind of equal weight on both legs, and she's almost thrusting her hips forward a little bit. You can have lines to indicate shoulder blades sometimes as well, especially if the character is really skinny or toned. It depends, again. No real wrong answers. See here with a really thick character, the line underneath the bum is not necessarily going upwards in that direction. It's kind of just a rainbow because it's, it's, it's big. It's big down there, it's thick. And you can see here I have head, neck, and then the arm is gonna be blocking part of the side of the body. So we don't have to worry about that too much. And then we just do our thing. Again, for a better view, you gotta keep track of those curve lines. The circles for the back of the leg, how that's gonna look. And then again, you can do whatever you want after that. I always have those circles. Just to, it, it just helps me visually. This, I do the same thing for the cows. Like I was saying, sometimes you can draw it in parts if it makes it easier, right? If you break it down into these weird shapes and say we only drew the torso first, and then we have this little hole that lets us know what the arm is gonna come out of. And then we draw the arm, right? And then once we've drawn the arm, we know what to erase. You gotta keep track of where those curves are going to be. It's gonna be a little different depending on the body type. Again, still using that spine. Sometimes you have the line for the shoulder blades. It just helps a little bit. Muscular character, know where the spine is, where the circles are to help guide. How tense you want the hip to be, it's completely up to you. 
Also, like I said, the pose sometimes can help bring certain life to the character. And here, when you keep track of overlap, depending on what the character is facing, sometimes we won't see certain things. So here, this character's arm is kind of going to get lost because the hip is in the way. For the two and a half people that enjoyed this video and made it to the end, don't forget to like this video. The United States should smash that subscribe button and hit the bell so you stay notified each time I upload absolutely anything. Turn on all notifications. Follow me on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, the list goes on. Read my comic, Apple Black, Pub Sincerializing Saturday AM for the world's most diverse manga anthology. Check out our app, Saturday AM is for the Shonen stuff, PM is for the Sanian stuff, and Brunch is for the Jose stuff. You can either buy volume one and two of my comic, paperback, or you can read the digital versions on there. More to be updated soon. And check out all the other comics there as well. The latest issues of every magazine is free. You can support us by subscribing to the app to get access to everything on the app. But there's also a free starter guide issue in there that kind of gives you a brief understanding of who we are. Check out more videos. It's why manga. And I'm out.